Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing fabulous today. I know I am, and that's because for the past few months I've been gathering clothes that I haven't worn in a boiling hot minute, and that's because I'm gonna dye them black. Because a majority of donated items end up in landfills if they are not purchased by somebody else, I wanna do what I can to prevent that. So I think by dyeing my clothes, that is a pretty snazzy way to live sustainably. You gotta reduce, reuse, recycle, you know? Three, three, three is the magic so if this is something that floats your boat, stay tuned. So I gathered some clothes that I used to wear quite frequently, but I don't anymore because they're now faded or worn out, or I just don't care for the color. A wonderful example, <laughs> a wonderful example of this is this super cute lace-up tank top that I thrifted this past summer, and I don't wear it anymore because as you can see, it is quite similar to my skin tone. And when I wore it out once, I got a comment that was like, hey, are you wearing a top? If I wasn't, who cares? But I was. Um, so it needs to be dyed. So I went through my entire closet and my dresser and I pulled out every piece that I do not wear anymore and I tried to narrow it down and I ended up with this. When deciding on what clothes to keep, I had to ask myself many important questions like, am I not wearing this because of the color? Am I not wearing it because of the fit, because of the brand, because of how it makes me feel? And these are also really important questions to ask yourself when you're out shopping. If I'm buying this top for X event, will I wear it after that? Will I remember this piece if it's been in my closet for three to four weeks and I haven't worn it and it's sitting in the back? Will I still want to grab it? And am I buying this because it's trendy and in style or because I genuinely like it and I want to wear it? These questions really helped me narrow down all of these clothes to see which pieces that I actually wanted to keep and die, or if it just wasn't for me anymore. And that's okay if clothes are not for you, it's okay to get rid of them. The first piece that I picked out is this oversized long sleeve shirt, and notice how I said oversized. Um, it is tagged a size small, I ordered a size small but it fits like a medium or large. Plus, the brand name is just not it, and I don't really fuck with them anymore. This green mock neck in reality should be right at my alley because it's a mock neck, and it's green, and it has lettuce hem, but it just fits me so just not good. It does not look right, and I think it's from when I had big bazongas in the past and it just stretched the shirt out? I don't know, but it just doesn't fit right and I'm not gonna keep it. Speaking of lettuce hems, here's one shirt that I will be keeping and it is the super cute cropped lettuce hem, no mock neck. But it's very cute and it fits me well and I really love this shirt, except for the color because I just have a lot of blue in my closet. The next item is this pair of green shorts, and if you've known me for a while, you will know that these shorts are a staple in my closet. But unfortunately, a few years back when I first started to bleach my hair, I never thought to wear crappy clothes whilst doing so. And so there are some bleach stains on here. So I'm hoping that the black dye will do something cool. This purple tank top, I literally just put in the pile because I wanted something else to dye, but now I'm like, girl, you literally have never worn this aside from your one Lola Scumpy cosplay. So yeah, I don't really care for the fit, and I mean, it's still in really good condition, so somebody else can use this while it's still purple. 
Now to the piece that inspired this entire video, this tan, skin-toned lace-up muscle tank. And as I said before, I absolutely love it. Nothing is wrong with it aside from the color. So this will look much better in black. And the final piece that I put in the pile to dye is actually one of my very first thrift finds. It's this blue floral button-up. And as you can see on the buttons, there are some gnarly yellow stains. So I think whoever was rocking this back in the day was rocking it at a cookout or something. Um, and they forgot their bib. So yeah, I hope that this will turn out really cool with the black dye. And oddly enough, almost all the pieces that I'm dyeing today are from Forever 21. So I guess you could say old habits die hard. Shut the hell up, bitch. Hey guys, so before we get into the video, I just want to say that this dye is non-toxic and septic safe, and that this video is not affiliated or sponsored by Red Dye. So if you would like to support me, then please kindly tap that like button, make sure you're subscribed, and if you're feeling funky, leave a comment. You can also check me out on Instagram at kel.sharp, and you can also check out my own small business at sharpshopphoto. That's all! Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> With Red's instructions, it says to add salt for natural cellulose fibers and to add vinegar for man-made fabrics. I cut off pretty much all the tags aside from the sizing tags, like the, the indoor tags, you know? Because if you have ever purchased Forever 21 clothing, you will know how annoying the tags are on the inside and just how many of them there are. So, um, yeah, those tags are gone in a flash. But unfortunately, I don't really know what these pieces are made out of. So after some research, I found out that Forever 21 actually uses mostly natural fabrics. But how are you making them? Anywho, not what this video is about. And the other pieces are mostly natural as well, so I will be using salt for this. Okay, so the people of Rit said before you start dyeing anything or preparing the mixture to get all the clothes wet and to squeeze out any excess water and this is to make sure everything gets fully saturated and to make sure there are no air bubbles so i'm gonna do that Okay, so now that those clothes are all rinsed out and everything, I just got three gallons of very hot water that is 140 degrees plus. So now I'm going to add one teaspoon of the forbidden syrup, and I will add that in there, and then I will add one cup of salt. Can you see it from the side? Yeah. Now I'm going to add the entire bottle of black dye because I just feel like that'll be enough to saturate it and I just want to be safe. So the whole bottle will be going in. Ready? need to be shaken up. Is it clumpy? Sort of. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it work. We're gonna mix it all together. Okay. 
There we go. <laughs> Now time to mix once again. Ooh. Oh. I was gonna hold them if you want. <laughs> because this is black dye, I'm going to put on gloves. in here, submerge it, and I'm going to mix it for up to one hour because 30 minutes You're going to be minimum. mixing for an hour? Yes. Constantly mixing. Are you serious? Yes. Oh. Yes. I... And so I will be mixing for up to an hour, though I will not be recording all that because it's a lot to record. So... There's no going back now. Clothes are all done. <laughs> They've been stirring for an hour and so now it's time to rinse it all off in cold water until it runs clear. And once that's done, I'll meet you back out here. Okay, so I just rinsed all of the clothes in cool water and it's quite a hit or miss if I do have to say so. This top for starters, as you can see, it is not black. It is more of a purpley mauve gray. Um, the yellow stain that I was trying to hide before is popping back out, and now on the back, an invisible stain has appeared. If you can see on camera, there's like green, dark splotches everywhere, and that was not there before. So I'm going to be setting this to the side, but everything else is pretty okay. Um, <laughs> well, except for this green top. Um, you might be able to tell it's the same color as before. Nothing happened. So the fabric must just not be working. So we're done with that. This tealy dark blue is now a dark blue black, which I'm okay with. So we're keeping that. This muscle tank, as you oh can see. Oh my gosh, the stitching too. The stitching and the lace detailing must have been a different fabric or material so it did not catch the dye, but I'm loving this look, so I'm keeping that. And well, these are outside, er, it, uh. these are inside out now. But as you can see, the black took very well. What color were these ones before? Um, a light green, and okay. they had bleach stains all over it. And looking pretty good now. So I don't think I'm gonna be fixing these two, so I'm gonna keep those to the side but I grabbed another bucket of three gallons of hot water and I, I will be adding half a bottle of this because there are a lot less items that are being dyed. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna mix it this time. Okay, half the bottle. Okay. Now I'm gonna give this, <gasps> Let me rinse this off, and then I'm going to give this a good stir. Now that this is rinsed off, it's just stained. I'm going to mix this all together. Now I'm going to add the clothes. And I'm going to consistently stir this once again, but this time for only 20 minutes. And then... I'll rinse it once again. So this has been simmering for 20 minutes in that fixative dye in really hot water. 
And so now I'm gonna rinse all of this off into cold water until all of the water runs clear. Then I will throw this into the washing machine with a dark towel. That way if there's any excess dye, it will soak up into the towel and not mess up anything else. And then once that's done, throw it in the dryer. I'm gonna go piss girl and then I'll be back and I'll try on everything for you guys and you can see the after. Okay. It's try on time. Oh, and here's a mini lookbook as well. Like I mentioned before, this green top did not take any dye whatsoever and the fit is just not right for me. So I will be giving this to a friend with a larger chest. However, I decided to style it as it would be a nice little farewell to the shirt. And check out these awesome thrifted capris and vans and you can get a glimpse at some of my other thrift finds linked down below. On to the next outfit. This floral button-up actually kinda sorta maybe worked out question mark? Um, I've washed this top like three times before dyeing it and it continued to look whack with all those yellow stains, but now that I washed it with the black dye, the yellow stains are gone? Question mark? I don't know. And the weird splotches are kinda blending in? I don't know. I don't know. But it's definitely more toned down and sophisticated, so I would say that this is a win. This next piece is the lettuce hem top that did kind of work out. Well, there isn't that much to say about it other than it's a wee bit darker than before, but hey, at least the dye did take. Now it's more of a blue toned charcoal, which actually looks pretty cool. So I paired that with these warm tone striped lounge pants and now I'm definitely sure that this will go with most of my wardrobe. So again, this is another win. You can't have a top without a bottom! Now it's time for shorts. I am seriously so surprised at how well the dye took in these, like they look pretty much brand new. The stitching on this is a bit different, so it stayed a little bit lighter, but I'm actually obsessed with how this is looking. And now I can continue to wear these for another five years. And now the grand finale, this Hot Rod Mama Biker Lace-Up Muscle Tank. Look at this! Oh my god. This is something you'd see at Urban being sold for $45, but hey, I thrifted this bad boy for $3 and spent just over $10 for the dyeing fixative. Plus, I was able to transform so many other pieces from my closet, thus preventing them from ending up in the landfill. I look hot, I feel hot, and I'm living sustainably. Yet another win. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I hope this inspires someone to slay in a sustainable way, and I hope you all have a fabulous day. Bye!